Hello, I'm Malhaz Mizandari, radiologist from Georgia. My talk is about low in, uh, ultrasound in low invasive management of small pelvis cystic masses. Small pelvic cystic masses. More and more uh, these problems are managed using low invasive treatment. Uh, we performed low invasive treatment under imaging, imaging guidance to two bovarian abscesses, post surgery cystic infected masses, uh, GY, post the GYN and rectal surgery, ovarian, para, para ovarian cysts, prostatic abscesses, and a few cases of paraproctitis. What kind of Low invasive treatment might be performed. It's aspiration rinsing to tubo ovarian abscess, ovarian cysts, prostatic abscesses, paraproctitis, and drainage procedures which were performed to tubo ovarian abscesses and post surgery infected cystic masses. Imaging guidance, guidance techniques which might be used for this purpose is ultrasound, combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy. CT guidance and MRI guidance. MRI guidance requires uh, non-magnetic instrumentation and uh, we have uh, experience using ultrasound, combination of ultrasound and CT guidance. Treatment procedures are performed using percutaneal approaches. For this purpose we can use ultrasound, combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy, CT and MR guidance and endocavity approach which might be used for uh, might be used when we perform ultrasound guidance and combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy guidance endocavity approaches means vaginal and rectal approach ultrasound or ct what uh, if we compare these two modalities for low invasive treatment guidance uh, first of all, we should mention the low, very well-known advantages, general advantages of ultrasound, like real-time uh, technique. Uh, this is non-invasive, no ionizing. We are not dealing with ionizing radiation. We have possibility of needle aiming a guiden uh, guidance. Uh, we have possibility of uh, real-time vessel imaging possibility of combination with other modalities. And at last, it's cost-saving technique. But when we are talking about the small pelvis area, first of all, and the most important advantage which should be mentioned is possibility of endocavity approach. That is why in our material we have only three cases performed under CT guidance uh, and all the rest cases we do under uh, X-ray and um, excuse me, ultrasound and combination of ultrasound fluoroscopy guidance. When we are talking about possibility on the methodology of CT guidance, I can, I'd like to show you some example of this, which is uh, another area, thoracic area, which is much more complicated uh, and uh, dangerous for puncture. Uh, patient, uh, in this case, uh, the um, target is posterior mediastinal mass. Uh, so what we do using CT guidance for low invasive procedure, first of all, we identify the uh, lesion, then we can do CT NGO to identify the major vessels in order to avoid the vessel damage. Then we put the markers on the skin to choose appropriately the, uh, exactly the uh, puncture site. We insert the needle uh, in a certain depth and make the control uh, to make sure that uh, the direction is adequate. If it's not, you can withdraw the needle and correct like you see here. Uh, then we uh, insert needle reaching the target and finally in this, the, in this case the mm, target was mm, posterior mediastinal lymph node for biopsy. We are in the target. This is the methodology which is used in any area including small, small pelvis also. Here we see equipment which we use for ultrasound and combined ultrasound fluoroscopy guidance. This is uh, ultrasound machine, very small. Uh, C arm unit with the uh, operation table, which is of course radiolucent and can move from the um, during the procedure from ultrasound to X ray area. Ultrasound probes with needle guide capabilities, which are used for these purposes. This is convex probe for percutaneal approach with needle guide, 
which uh, has um, different adapters which accept different diameter needles and endocavity probe with needle guide which accepts 18 gauge needle. Very simple device for aspiration rinsing. Uh, you see here different diameter needles which use uh, starting from 22 gauge Shiba needle to, eight, uh, to 14 gauge quite thick needle and syringe with connector for aspiration. Device for one step drainage contains of uh, stiffening ca cannula with internal stillet and uh, catheter, drainage catheter. We more pre prefer to use um, catheters with a neat fixation thread which does not require uh, the fixation to the skin, except um, it's uh, especially important when we do endocavity uh, procedures. Devices for draining using drainage using uh, guide wire technique consists of uh, a puncture needle which use uh, we we use usually 18 gauge needle which accepts um, guide wire 035 or 038 diameter guide wire and uh, catheter for uh, drainage usually we use a metallic stiffening cannula, cannula which facilitates the placement of the catheter. Here you see the example of percutaneal approach for ovarian cyst aspiration. This is a uh, uh, 90 cc volume um, ovarian cyst which was uh, which remained um, during the several menstrual cycles and was symptomatic causing dull pain. Here you see 22 gauge needle. This is the needle guide. A guidance trace and you see how the needle 22 gauge needle is inserted in the ovarian cyst and on these pictures you see how gradually the cyst is aspirated uh, completely. Uh, by the way the patient had no recurrence after this procedure. Percutaneal approach might be used for drainage proce procedures. Um, this is the cystic, infected cystic mass in patient who under, underwent the surgery of because of GYN malignancy, it was uh, infected seroma. Here the needle is inserted into the mass. Uh, you see here how guide wire, how guide wire is conducted and you see the opacified uh, cavity under which um, this is the second stage of the control under uh, we control it uh, using fluoroscopy unit and finally the pigtail catheter is placed in this mass. Um, you see how contrast agent is, in, uh, agent is injected and you see how this drained cavity is filled by contrast agent and you see this after the aspiration of the content. This is the case of uh, uh, which is, was also performed percutaneally post rectal surgery infected mass. You see the CT image uh, here is uh, posteriorly uh, from the bladder. You see the a gas containing um, mass which was uh, post surgery infected um, seroma. Uh, patient underwent the surgery because of rectal cancer and the rectum was removed. So here is just the fluid which contains gas bubbles, definitely abscess. Uh, as you see, it's possible to drain this uh, abscess using CT guidance from this or this approach, but when we put patient on the left decubitus position and place a uh, transducer in the anal area, we see immediately this mess and that was the most safe approach for this um, uh, in this case, which was performed under ultrasound guidance. You see here the needle in the uh, cystic mass. After this, uh, we, you see the, uh, we um, uh, switch to the second stage of uh, guidance. It's fluoroscopy guidance. You see the needle tip and the guide wire in the mass. Uh, the uh, pigtail catheter is placed in the mass and the contrast agent uh, shows the opacified cavity of the abscess. Vaginal approach. Uh, uh, this procedure was performed to tubo ovarian abscess. You see the needle guide here and uh, 18 gauge needle which is inserted in tubo ovarian abscess. This is a needle stillet which is removed and aspiration and rinsing procedure. You see here the aspiration and rinsing procedure uh, which was performed several times using saline and 
um, and uh, finally uh, the mass was aspirated completely. Another example of endorectal approach, this is uh, rectal uh, aspiration of prostatic abscess. You see here the prostate and the small up to one cc um, cystic mass which turned out to be the prostatic abscess and caused very uh, severe clinical findings uh, despite the active medical treatment, antibiotic or therapy, it was resistant. Uh, here you see how the needle is inserted via the, uh, using the rectal approach uh, into the cystic mass which uh, was very viscous, which has very viscous content and you see the gradual uh, aspiration of this um, abscess uh, and rinsing uh, of uh, the residual cavity by saline. Uh, ultrasound and combined ultrasound fluoroscopy guidance in low invasive management of uh, small pelvis cystic masses was successful in 95.5% of cases. And in conclusion, I'd like to mention that ultrasound guidance using percutaneal and endocavity approaches is the most effective in small pelvis cystic masses low invasive treatment. Low invasive imaging guided management of small pelvis cystic masses is effective, safe, and cost-saving. It should be used as a gold standard in small pelvis cystic masses treatment. Thank you for your attention.